Jazz Jackrabbit is a platformer game developed and published by Epic Mega Games with a release date of August 1st, 1994 and a CD released on November 28, 1994. The game proved to be popular and managed to kickstart Cliff Blazinski's career. Yep, the man who went on to create Unreal and Gears of War. Remember Aesop's fable of the tortoise and the hare? You know, hare challenges tortoise to a race, hare takes nap midway, and hare wakes up to see tortoise has won. 3,000 years later, they're still at it. That's quite the grudge the hare has, or in this case, jackrabbit. My guess is since the tortoise won, he got an ego so big he started to amass an army to take the hares down. Wow, I thought it would be the other way around, where the hare got so mad he started a war against the tortoises. Whatever the case, they're still fighting. Anyways, the leader named Devon Shell kidnaps Princess Ava Erlang, and it's up to Jazz Jackrabbit to save her and bring peace to the galaxy. And he does so with the LFG. The gameplay is your basic run and gun game. Go from point A to point B and blast everything in sight while collecting power-ups and finding secrets. And believe me, there is a lot to collect. Additionally, every episode has a red gem to collect which will take you to a pseudo 3D bonus level. Interestingly enough, the bonus levels themselves can be played without having to play an episode. Now that I think of it, let me mention the controls. The controls themselves aren't the problem. The problem is that they're very touchy. This is more noticeable with the controller. Ironically, the graphics gamepad is heavily promoted in this game. Jumping is the biggest culprit in this game, as it's very easy to lose control if you jump like crazy. In the 3D bonus levels, the controls are even touchier and even easier to lose control. My guess is that Jazz was trying to be the PC equivalent to Sega Sonic as trying to be fast. While Sonic got the concept of speed right, Jazz doesn't. Jazz focuses more on shooting everything on sight rather than running fast. Later episodes tend to focus more on combat rather than speed. Along the way, there are power-ups which grant Jazz four more weapons, including Toaster, RF Missile, Bouncer, and TNT. Other power-ups include Rapid Fire, a bird that brings extra firepower, Speed Boost, two types of shields, Hoverboard, and Invincibility. I forgot to mention that later episodes have jump shoes for extra height. With that out of the way, let's talk about the graphics. The characters are cartoon-like, and the animation does flow nicely. The levels are semi-less linear than Sonic, but aren't as open. What I'm getting at is that Sonic's levels are huge and open, but more linear in design. Here are the first levels of Sonic and Jazz to compare. See if you notice. Speaking of design, it seems most of the levels have a gradient background. It does seem a bit odd that this design was implemented considering that a PC in 1994 was more powerful than a Mega Drive. The graphics overall is a mix of bright and colorful and dark and dismal. Meaning that some levels are bright and some are dark. Of course the highlight of this game is the soundtrack. The soundtrack for each level does fit nicely and does bring each level to life. At the end of each episode is a boss battle. For the most part, it's just Devon Shell in a machine of some kind. Before it slips my mind, let me mention the challenge. While younger players will enjoy Jazz more, those who have played this long ago will get a nostalgia trip. Overall, Jazz Jack Rabbit serves as a reminder that if this game didn't exist, we probably wouldn't have Unreal and Gears of War. And we can all say thank you to Cliff Blazinski. Jazz Jack Rabbit gets 3 carrots out of 5.